New Hoyt 2024 RX8 and Alpha X. Which one should a guy buy? Let's figure it out. Hello and welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm FJJ here with PodiumArcher.com looking at the new Hoyt bows, or at least these two. These are the RX-8 Ultra and the Alpha X. These bows are basically the same ones, carbon ones, aluminum. Outside of that, there is literal to no difference. But according to the spec sheets, which are right here, I can tell you, your Alpha X-30 is a 344 bow. Your RX-8 is a 342 bow. The weight is four and a half pound, 4.55 versus four. Uh, let's see, 30 and three eighths on the axle to axle versus 30 and nine sixteenths. So there's a sixteenth difference. Uh, six and three sixteenths versus six and an eighth. Both have the same draw length ranges. Both have the same poundage peaks. A couple of things that are new this year on these bows. One, it's a wider limb set. So if you look at this compared to an older Hoyt, which I probably have one sitting around here somewhere, uh, they're about a I want to say three eighths of an inch wider, which should make the bow quite a bit more stable, which is pretty cool. This is uh, one of the reasons why Last Chance redid their bow presses to make the fingers wider because the bows that were coming out this year required wider fingers. Uh, we do have those parts on the website if you have an older Last Chance and you end up with one of these bows. Uh, and so far the Matthews titles are wider as well where you would need that. Um, these also have three module base options instead of two. So last year, you can only put two different modules in here. There's actually three different choices. And what you gain with that on the shorter module is a better speed bump when you change the module out. So on this bow, for example, I think it went to 28, and then you had to put the other module on there. And when you did that, or maybe it was 28 and a half, and then when you went to the other module, it was 28. There was a giant speed bump, but then you had like five inches or four inches of range down and no speed bump in between. Now there's an additional third module in there on all the bows. So when you're in that 26 inch range on this, there's actually a different module and you'll gain an increase in speed on that. So these are gonna be quite a bit more efficient on the slower end of things. They also added this little, what'd you call this? The nipple of destiny? <laughs> So this is a little piece that's on machined onto the cams and it's got a rubber inset O-ring on it. And what that does, ironically, and I'll show it to you, is when you set it on the ground, the cam's sitting on that and not on the string groove. And why is that important, you say? Well, you know, they're ghost sticks. They came out with a better ghost stick. Let me grab one real quick and I'll show you how it works. This is a new improved ghost stick. Looks a lot like a bipod for a rifle, but it's spring loaded. So you push it down, rotate them forward, Rotate them back, lock them down for what you want there. And then when this is installed on that bow, this sits on the ground and the little nipple of destiny sits on the ground and the cam groove doesn't actually sit on the ground. And a lot of people complained about that on the original ghost stick. It mounts down here and they've threaded it to where you can still use your lower stabilizer hole with a quick disconnect in it, just like the original ghost stick did. You can see it there. And I'll go ahead and bolt one of these on here so you can see it working. Give me a okay, so that's what it looks like on the bow. This will go on anything with a lower stabilizer hole. This will go on anything with a lower stabilizer hole. There's a bolt for squaring it up on the Hoyt that they have mounted another hole underneath. And it still has a quick disconnect for your stabilizer and the mount underneath. So when you're not using it, you can rotate these forward, rotate them all the way back, depending on where you want it. I mean, if you have a longer stabilizer on, I don't see anything hurting keeping it forward, but it's a really cool idea. I think it's the most elaborate one I've seen and it basically just looks like a bipod off of a rifle. And then tighten them down and rock and roll. This is $129. Um, and we do have like 50 of these on order already. As soon as they are available, we will stock them. These will go on older bows, but you won't be able to put that screw hole in there. So you'll have to rely on tightening down the main hole for it to work. And I haven't tried this yet on other bows. I will make a separate video on just this bipod to see if we can put it on other bows. Uh, but it's a freaking really cool design incorporated with that to where nothing's touching. All right, so let's check some of our measurements on these bows and see how they're stacking up. All right, our axle to axles are 30 and 9 sixteenths and 30 and 3 eighths. So I'll check this one first. Go to the far. Yeah, it's at 30 and 9 sixteenths. Check this one. Yep, 30 and 3 eighths. Those are spot on. Our braces are 
six and an eighth and six and three sixteenths. Fold that up and the back of the string, that's six and an eighth. Yep. And this is six. Yep, six and three sixteenths. That's spot on. Good numbers there. Uh, physical weight, we can check here. Grab that. Let's take this off. Yeah, you good. Good. Okay. Four point three to four. I usually give about a tenth a pound for the rest. So that's four point two. And you do have. Well, that's about it. So we're gonna say that's four two. Imagine you could probably take the string dampeners off, but. 4.2 there, um, and unfortunately I'm going to have to pull that bipod off to weigh this one because that's a lot of weight to add. Give me a sec to... Okay, I got that bipod off there. This is coming in at 4.8 to 4.9. Less a tenth for that, so we're going to call it 4.7. So both of them are like a little two tenths heavy. I mean, these are on here, and you could probably take that off, uh, but in general, they both come in about two tenths heavy. So uh, let's see our overall riser lengths on these. Uh, 27 and an eighth, and then I should have a tape, there it is. Let's see what we're doing for amount of reflex design. Two and a half. Let's try the carbon too. Go to the side of it, there we go. And 27 and a quarter. It looks about, about the same amount of reflex. Yeah. Two and a half, two and five eighths. So basically the same reflex geometry. And if you lay these on top of each other, you'll see they're basically exactly the same. I mean, this is an aluminum bow and a carbon bow designed to be the same bow. So you can really make a choice on what you feel is worth it for you. Uh, let's check our draw weights here. See if we need to adjust those. These are set at 30 inches already. They have an adjustable let off peg on there, which is pretty nice. And they did go to quarter inch increments, so that's 71.6. So you can now adjust it via quarter inch, which is pretty cool, because honestly, that's kind of necessary. And not a lot of bow manufacturers have done that yet. Here we go. So it's nice to see a major bow manufacturer jumping on that bandwagon, adding a little bit extra length. Let's see what a half a turn does for us. Still feels just good. 69.6, so I'll have to bump it just a tiny bit back up. Gotta be within like two. Being fair here. Seventy point one. There you go. So this one's ready. Let's check the alpha. The Alpha X. Ooh, that's about 73. I don't need to come down turn probably. Nine five. We'll have to go up just a tiny bit. Give it a quarter. Oh, that was too much. Seventy point eight. Oh, fun, fun, fun. Down eight. Oh, sorry, Tim. <sighs> Action camera. 69.9. That'll do. All right. Let's shoot these things and see how they feel. Oh, we gotta check the draw lengths first. All right, so on the carbon, there's not a bolt hole in the middle of the riser. You wanna come to this side, maybe? Over here. There you go. 
there's not a bolt hole in the middle of the riser, but I would put that like that's in here. So I'd say if anything, it's maybe an eighth of an inch long of 30 at most, but because there's not a bolt hole, I don't have an accurate measurement to go off of. So if anything, it's a tiny bit long, but pretty darn close. So that's not bad. All right, once again, there's no bolt hole on here. It's underneath that sticker. And this looks about the same. It looks like it's 30 and, I don't want to say 30 and a quarter about where the bolt hole should be under there. So yeah, I'd say it's 30 and a quarter, so it's a little long. All right, this will be my first three shots through the RX-8 at 30 inches, 70 pounds, 350 grain air. The draw still feels pretty smooth. I mean, this is a completely redesigned cam. I sure don't feel much for vibration at all, if any. Uh, the cycle's really nice. Um, it's very, very easy to get through. I'm trying to slowly go into the back end so I can feel the, the hump, and it's really mild. Um, comparable to some of the other ones I've tested so far this year that are putting out a really good speed, it's minimal. There's a little hump, but it is not a hard dump. It's nice, easy, gradual, like you can pull right into it and it's not difficult at all. All right, let's get some vibrations on this thing. This feels really good. All right, recording our vibration three times. Fifteen twenty four. Eleven oh three. So we'll give it twelve and a half, probably for an average. All right, seventy pounds, three hundred fifty grain arrows, thirty inches. Let's see how fast it is. RX eight. Three thirty six. Three thirty six duplicate. Three thirty three. So we'll give you a three thirty five and then we'll try the heavier arrows. All right, four hundred and fifty grain arrows and then five hundred and fifty grain arrows. Giving you all the speeds. Two ninety three. Yeah, I can't emphasize how smooth this cycle is. It's really smooth. Three hundred. Ooh, that's quite a big bump. We may have to reshoot. Depending on what this does, we may have to reshoot one of those two arrows and get a closer average. So two 300s and one 293, I'll reshoot, it's one on the left. Reshoot that arrow. I didn't shoot quite right over the top of the sensor, so that could be why. You gonna give me one of those? <laughs> That's a lot of faith, bro. Well, that again, it is my camera, so you're probably not as worried about it. Now I'm really nervous, like super duper nervous. Oh, it, yeah, it's not going to read because you set the camera on it. Of course, I knew that. <laughs> Knucklehead. <laughs> I'm sure it's cool. 
I switched it to slow mo. Er two. Two ninety nine. All right. Three hundo it is on those. And then we'll shoot the five fifties. Three hundred. That's cooking. That's cooking for four fifty, man. Last ones. Two sixty four. Two sixty six. Two seventy two. That's weird. Better pull that last one, shoot it one more time. Two seventy one. So we'll give it a two sixty nine overall. All right. All right, here's my first shots out of the Alpha X 30 inch set at 30 inch and 70 pounds, 350 green arrows. See how she feels. Now that cycle is exactly the same as the carbon, but it does feel it's weird. And I've experienced this before. That feels good. Um, I don't know what it is or why, and maybe it's just me, but ever since Hoyt's made carbon bows, and aluminum bows, whenever I shoot the two side by side, it feels like the carbon's easier to pull, everything else being equal. And I don't know why. I have no idea what that is, but like this is, this stacks a little harder, even though it's got the same cam and the same limb and the same limb angle on it. I don't get it. But there's something about that carbon that just feels like it pulls easier. And uh, comment down below on if you go in and try these bows out and feel the same thing. Cause I don't know if it's just me or something weird that I feel, but I've noticed that with their bows forever since they've made like the same bow just with a carbon riser and aluminum riser when they've offered that, it just feels like the uh, aluminum version's harder to pull back and everything else is the same. All right, let's put the vibe on it and see what we get. Wrong. All right. Vibration test, 350 grain arrows. Five, six, five, holy crud. Eight nine oh six five five. That is the lowest vibration test we've had. It's really low. Give it a 6.2, let's see, There's somewhere around there. Whew. All right, 350 grain arrow, 70 pounds, 30 inches, Alpha X. Three thirty-five. Let's spot on the other one. Three thirty six. Three 
334. So that's an average of 335, exactly the same as the carbon. But it was rated faster on their deals. So 335, 335. Let's shoot the 450s and the 550s now. All right, 450 grainers followed by 550 grainers. Let's see what we get. Three oh one, two ninety eight, two ninety seven. So that'll be 299. All right. 550, here we go. Two seventy. It's not a ginormous surprise that these are going to be like the exact same speed as each other, but I mean, they are designed the same, so they should be. 271. 271. All right, I'm gonna start putting some numbers on stuff. Let me free up my hands here. All right, so this is kind of be a little confusing because we're gonna do both of them together, but uh, a draw cycle for the speed that you're getting out of that bow, I gotta give it fives. Like it is a really smooth draw for what it is. Uh, grip for me is not my ideal. It's more rounded, more contoured. It's still relatively slender, but I like a square edge grip personally. But as far as contoured grips go, I'd still give it a good rating because it's a fairly narrow one. So I'll give them both fours. Back walls, I'll give a four. There's a little more give to it than some of the other ones, but it's still pretty firm. Balance, I got to give you fives because that bow's incredibly well balanced, both of them. All right, uh, da -da -da. let's get down here to your weights. Um, let's see, we're 4.2 and 4.7. So you're a little heavy from what you say they are. And they're a little heavier than really, frankly, uh, they could be. I mean, your carbon's right in where it should be. I'll give you fours um, on your carbon, and I'm going to give you a three on your aluminum. Um, you're at your ATAs and brace heights came out exactly where they were supposed to be. Uh, and on a 30-inch axle-to-axle bow, those are relatively reasonable parts, so i got to give you good numbers there. Um, this is still... Uh, still me though, but I'd like to see the brace height a little higher. So I'll give you fives on the axle to axle for what they are, but I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you fours on brace. Cause they basically have the same brace. Both of them measured a little long. Um, so I'm going to have to give you, I'll give you a, I'll give you a four. Um, you're on the, on the verge of getting a three though. You can't get much out of the actual range. Reflex is 2.5 and 2.6. You're getting like a two. I do not on both of them. That is way too much reflex in today's world to be able to make a bow that's forgiving. You absolutely can do that with less reflex. Those bows have a lot of reflex in them. I'm not sure why they design it that way, but I'm sure their engineer likes it. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, your speed's within seven, and the speed you're getting out of those bows is really very impressive. Um, it's not, there's faster bows, but not for how they feel that I've tested so far. So I got to give you some high marks there. I'm going to go ahead and give you a fives for speed because that is just really good for what they are and how they feel because they don't cycle rough. Um, let's see here. And your vibration, like you're getting a five on the aluminum and um, I'm going to give you a four on the carbon and I'm only giving you a four on the carbon because that number's higher than some of the other bows we've tested, but it's also the lowest number we've had on a bow that light. So, but I'm still going to stick with a four there, um, just because the, that, that 
6.2 is so low. I mean, that's just crazy. All right, let's talk features on these bows and compare them. Let's grab a couple real quick here. We got this one. And this one. Okay, so, excuse me, Luke. We have front mount Picatinny's, rear mount integrated rests, integrated V-bar brackets, really freaking cool ghost stick option now that's way better than what they made last year. It's still still pretty good and functional last year, but this year was 100 times better. Adding a little indent to the cam, so when you set your cam on the ground, I've never seen somebody do that. That was pretty freaking slick. Um, features wise, I think I gotta give you fives. Like you've done everything that this industry is like migrating to out of everybody. Like you've got rest integration, you got side integration and your quivers. Like if you're looking, if you own a Hoyt and you haven't looked at their quivers, you're kind of foolish. Like their quivers are amazingly good, low profile, very adjustable. I mean, really cool stuff. Yeah, and it doesn't require you to use this front sight to still use their quiver, which is unique. Like some of the guys making integrated quivers, you gotta use their sight system to make it work. So I'm gonna give you fives on features, hands down. That is a lot of features specific to your product. So you get fives in both of those. Tunability, you're not gonna like me here. There's no tuning features to these bows. All right, you got shim spacers and that's it. Which if you follow the, the industry and you follow the market, most people are trying to gravitate to something different. Um, they did change the spacers. I believe they're aluminum now and they went to a bigger axle. So they did improve the axle assembly system. They're threaded through, not Eclipse like they used to be. And those are metal spacers. But I did confirm that those are still just spacers. I'll give you a little bit of an up because you made them out of metal instead of plastic and a bigger axle, and that's an improvement. But outside of that, there's no other way to tune this bow other than moving the cam back and forth and moving the rest back and forth. And this is still kind of tough. They did make a tool that makes this easier, but it's still more on the difficult side. So tunability, and you're probably gonna hate me for this. I'm giving you twos. I'd like to see something that makes this more easily adjustable. And being as that almost every major manufacturer is addressing this, um, I'd like to see this addressed personally. That's just me and hopefully they don't get too mad at me. Um, let's see here, Red fours on those. Oh, the aluminum was a little longer, so I'm gonna give it a three because that was closer to the right length. And price. So we did get confirmation in the middle of making this video that the, uh, the bow price on the aluminums is $12.49 on the 30, and it's $18.49 on the carbon. Now, that's a big difference, but you gotta understand it's a lot more difficult to make a carbon bow. So there's a reflection of what that is. Um, that price on the carbon bow is within the realm of most of the other carbon bows in the market, and that bow feels incredible. It really does, out of the carbon bows I've tested. Um, so I think you gotta give them a four on their price there for the carbon. And on the aluminum, that's right in the price point in which it should for all the features that you're being offered and whatnot. I gotta give them, there, there's a ton more machine work in that bow, but they didn't raise the price. And that's, I mean, I, I gotta give you a better rank for that. Like if you, if you would look at that product and compare it to last year's bow, right? Let me give you this visually. They cut so much more out of this riser. Like there's recession and machine time and work everywhere in here that was not in last year's bow. So this has a ton more cut in it, like just a ton. And yet the price didn't go up. So I mean, that's pretty awesome. Now, my personal opinion, if you could make a bow before you dress it, weigh four pounds, it's a perfect weight. And that's just how I feel. Because if you get it lighter than that, you gotta add a whole lot of weight to the bow to make it feel about the right physical weight when you're done on a hunting setup. And if you start with heavier than that, you're gaining about a half pound of physical weight that you really don't need by the time it's all said and done. So don't misplace the value of starting with a lighter package to begin with. So let's see what our numbers end up as. Okay, five, nine, 14, 15, 16, 21, 25, 27 on this one, 27 alpha. X. All right, 9, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 26 
on the RX8. All right. All right, so those are all the same other than that's one lower. So 5, 10, 18, 19, 20, 20 22, 6, 31, and 30. So we're 31 on the aluminum or 31, 30. Yeah. Did I flip those around? I think I flipped those around. Yeah, that should be 30 and 31 and I do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And that's right. Which one was long? The aluminum was long. That's backwards. This is 26, that's 27. The aluminum one was a little longer than the RX-8 and I took that point, so those are flipped around. All right, so those are my scores for it. The bow, all in all, the bows feel real solid. I'm really excited that they didn't raise the price on the aluminum and the carbon only went up 50 bucks, which having a wider limb set, more aggressive cam system, and not changing the price on the carbon bow in a little bit, that, that didn't seem unreasonable to me. I still think that bow's in the realm of where it should be for price. And if you're looking for the nicest thing you can get, that's probably something to really consider. Um, don't sleep on the fact that one's a half a pound lighter than the other. That's really a big deal. You can't just remove a half pound from one of these things, okay? And as long as you're at that four pound range, it's a really good starting point to make an overall really good, well-balanced. and not too physically heavy bow. Head on over to podiumarchery.com for all those archery needs. $99 and up, still free shipping. We add more and more stuff to that every day. And if there's stuff you're looking for that's not on there, please message me and tell me. Whatever you guys are looking for, if I'm not carrying it, I will carry it. If I'm allowed to carry it, I really wanna be, in the long run, the place you buy stuff from where you're allowed to buy it at. You know, like these bows, you can't. You gotta buy those direct from, the, uh, from your shop. But Hopefully this helps you make a better decision on what you like and what you don't like and what you want to look at and what you don't want to look at. Comment down below and let me know what you think. Thanks.